Let's test out CSGO, see how that does. 12 seconds later. You're sick of seeing the same activation watermark with your shiny new rig, snag an OEM Windows 10 Pro key from SCD key. Even if you've already installed Windows 10 on your machine, you can shell out a little over 10 bucks for an authentic key that'll activate your copy. Click the link below and use offer code SSTUDIO for an 18% discount on your order. All right, this one's going to be interesting. I want to build a PC that uses no fans at all, that includes fans in the case, fans in the power supply, fans in the graphics card, fans for the CPU. I want no fans. Straight up, I want it to be a dead silent system. We're gonna confirm that with our sound meter and we're also going to be uh, running through the parts and my justification for choosing the parts that I am choosing. Uh, there are a few graphics cards on the market that do not utilize fans, but I don't have any of those on hand and they're fairly rare, difficult to get my hands on, especially here in the States. So uh, I'm going to try my best to mod a card that I have on hand uh, and just remove the fans or just turn them off down clock the graphics card and still be able to play some lighter 1080p titles uh, maybe csgo maybe some dota 2 if we can squeeze out something like fortnite that would be great but um i'm i'm keeping an open mind because we're, we're gonna have to down clock the graphics card a lot if we want to get rid of fans so uh, we'll experiment with all that in this video there's no guarantee of success but uh we we can start off with parts that we know will work well without fans and uh the first place to start is the power supply. So this is the Nightjar uh, NJ450. We reviewed it in a dedicated video right here from Silverstone and it utilizes no fans. It's in the SFX L form factor, which is also pretty impressive. So it's a smaller profile than standard ATX power supplies. And again, dead silent. There's no internal parts that move. So it's a good place to uh, begin. Now, as for the CPU, I was debating whether or not I wanted to use Intel or AMD. Obviously, those are kind of the only two choices at my uh, disposal. And the 2600 really struck home for me because this is such a low TDP CPU. Well, something like 65 watts for this thing. Uh, it does mean we're gonna need a that discrete GPU, obviously, but uh, that was the plan all along. And I, we can actually even downclock this a bit thanks to the unlocked multiplier. Pretty much every AMD chip out there is gonna have an unlocked multiplier. Player. That is nice. We don't have to pay a, a K skew tax like we would for Intel. And uh, that's going to give us some breathing room. So if we do have to down clock, which we'll probably have to depending on the CPU cooler we use, uh, we, we should, you know, have some breathing room. I think if we go to around three gigahertz, maybe a little below that, we can run a beefy air cooler without a fan and this should be fine. As for RAM, it doesn't really matter what we go with, although you might be slightly concerned about the LEDs overheating modules, especially when we have no active cooling or any fan of any sort in the case. Uh, we'll check temps, but I think these A-Pacer Nox modules are gonna be fine and they look really good at that. Now I was scrolling through Reddit and I came across this 3dcenter.org graph. It shows performance per watt. It's kind of a ratio between the amount of power uh, that a graphics card consumes and the relative performance of the card in question. So you can see that Nvidia pretty much dominates this chart and we're hoping Navi changes that soon. Uh, but for now, we're gonna have to go with an Nvidia card and we kind of have no choice but to uh, pick one of the higher ones here. So the 1660 Ti seems to be one of the uh, better cards in terms of performance per watt. So I think we're gonna go with that one. We have one from Gigabyte and I'm gonna strip the fans off of the shroud and uh, <laughs> see how far we need to down clock it in order to get it stable without a fan. I, I don't know, I, I think this is a good place to start. If the 1660 Ti doesn't work, then maybe the 1070, which is a really good card. I wouldn't wanna go as far back as Maxwell though, uh, because Maxwell was pretty power hungry, relatively speaking. That was one of the big advantages of Pascal at the time, one of the reasons why I really liked uh, that architecture. Now, if you will excuse the mess in here, uh, you can see we have a lot of cards to play with, but I'm, I'm again pretty sure we're gonna wanna stick with something like a 1660 or a 1660 Ti. The Ti had the better price to prefer performance ratio in the chart. So I think we're gonna go with this. Although a concern that I have, sorry about the autofocus, and it's not gonna be very good with this uh, A7S2. We have a, yeah, just a two fan card here. So it's a smaller cooler. And that's part of my concern with this. If we have to drop the clocks too much to get this stable without fans running, then we'll try the 1660, uh, which is a triple fan card I have in there. And uh, it's, it's just a bigger, heat sink, so more more contact with the air, more surface area, and uh, that should allow more heat to passively radiate. So uh, we'll, we'll find out. No, what do you think, Pepsi? 
You think we can think we can pull it off? I don't I don't know if she's uh I don't know if she's gonna investigate. You gonna check it out? You think we can do it, Pepsi? Think we can do it? Yep, I'm gonna have to get back to you on that one. Now lastly, the cooler. I don't want to use an H7. Uh, even though this is a quad lumi and we got four heat pipes this time around, I don't think this is what we want to use. I think we need something a little bigger than a Dark Rock 4 even. The, t the, the Dark Rock TF looks pretty cool. I'm just, I'm, it's 220 watts, what's this, 200 watts? Yeah, we could go with the Dark Rock TF and just kind of wing it and we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, the Dark Rock Pro 4 would be the ideal cooler. I'm not sure where I put that. I know I had one of those around here somewhere. Um, but I put most of my air coolers here. So yeah, we'll just go with the TF for now. And uh, again, we'll see how it fares. I expect we'll have to do a bit of adjusting as we go along because I have not tested any of this prior to filming. So yeah, you guys get to come along for the ride. Alright, so we've got this monstrosity built and it is entirely fanless. No case fans, no CPU fan, no graphics card fans. I actually took those out even though I could have just disabled them. I'm not sure if that would affect temperatures at all, but to make it truly fanless, it can have fans. So that's why I removed them. And then also the power supply, of course, has no fan. So this system, when we power it on, should be uh, like almost dead silent. I mean, there's uh, other than maybe some minor coil line from inductors and whatnot. This should be almost totally silent. So what I'm going to do is plug in some fans and just kind of like let them hang uh, so that we can install windows on this machine because I don't want it to crap out on me in the window in the middle of the uh, installation. That would be pretty bad. Uh, so I'm just to be safe going to do that. Of course, I can't like manually down clock the graphics card without booting into Windows first, so I have to install the OS beforehand. Uh, the CPU though, I'm going to go ahead and clock down to probably, I don't know how long I can go with this board, probably around two and a half gigahertz or so across all cores and uh, really undervolt this thing just to keep temps in check while we install the operating system. All right, let's go ahead and power it on. See, I've got two fans here, one for the graphics card just to keep that one uh fairly cool and then one just kind of hanging here for the CPU again very temporary I just want this thing to post yeah probably should have watched that okay the lowest I can get this multiplier to go is 28 and uh, we can actually see if I can tamper with the base clock because I don't know if 28 is going to be low enough uh, let's see, video CP voltage, that's offset mode. I would leave it on auto for now, because I don't really want to find what the minimum voltage is for this frequency. We'll, we'll just see. We'll see how temperatures fare. And, uh, we'll go ahead and boot into our UEFI SanDisk partition. All right, so what I've done is dropped the power limit down to 58%, that's as low as I can go. So 58% of the 100% power allocation that's just stock out of the box. Uh, I left the temperature limit up. You can unlink these two. Typically when they're linked, you'll see they'll scale together. Uh, so I unlinked them and uh, lowered the power limit as low as I could go. And then I left the temperature limit up to, we'll just say 85. It's pretty high, but I, I don't think we're, if we do hit that temperature, I mean, <laughs> there's not much more we can do. Core clocks dropped by 500 megahertz. I've also dropped the memory clocks to uh, minus 500 as well. 
and uh, obviously no fan speed because we don't have fans installed. A few moments later. Yeah, I don't think I wanna let this run for much longer. If I close this panel off, it would be much, much worse. The good thing is though, and we'll talk about this later, it's a dead silent system, so do you really even need a left panel? Like that's kind of, I mean, to block dust, sure, but uh, dust is gonna make its way in no matter what. So in the case of a silent, totally silent system with no moving parts, having the left panel off really isn't going to hurt you much. Okay, so I think I fixed the CPU throttling issue. You can see actually now I'm stressing the CPU, the FPU and the cache, and uh, temperatures are pretty much flatlined, which is pretty incredible. I thought, I thought surely it would still continue to rise just at a slower pace. Uh, so what I did was I disabled the core performance boost, which is just what ASUS calls their well, like essentially like multi-core enhancement. Uh, it doesn't allow the CPU to turbo past my set clock speed in the BIOS. So you can see now if we go to clocks, all the cores are locked to just under 30, uh, 2800 megahertz. So 2794 here for all six of those cores. And that's keeping temperatures uh, significantly lower. Actually, only just recently did our CPU cross that 59 degree threshold. So um, you can see it's been running for about two minutes now. At this point, two minutes into the test beforehand, we were running at around 80 to 90 degrees Celsius. So this is a massive improvement. This should fix the CPU side of things, at least long term for a lot of games, uh, but we're still gonna have issues with the GPU. So um, let's test out CSGO, see how that does. Twelve seconds later. Holy crap, this card is hot. This is like dangerously hot. And the entire PCB is this way. Like the connections right here, the PCI dock is burning up. Um, I'm kind of concerned now about this. I shouldn't have. Uh... Shouldn't have been allowed to have gotten that hot, but whatever, for science, we at least know that that's not gonna work. The graphics card was the thing being stressed the most and it pegged itself at around 90 to 92 degrees Celsius before I decided to turn it off because that's just way too hot for a 1660 or TI. So I DDU uninstalled, that's what just happened here, system shutting down. We're gonna try out a method that uh, Crackling Ice from Twitter recommended. He said, why don't you use an AMD graphics card because you can use Wattman, you can really lower frequencies in Wattman uh, to a much greater extent that you can, than you can in, in MSI Afterburner. So I was like, okay, well, at first it didn't really make sense to me, but uh, now it does because clearly I can't, uh, I can't lower temps any more than that. So we're going to, I'm not sure which one we're gonna go with. I think we're gonna do an RX 580. And um, I think what I'm also going to do is rip the entire shroud off and just see if I can have like the bare PCB with the heat sink. Uh, that way maybe it can get rid of more of the heat passively. Um, yeah, let's do let's do the 580s. And we'll, 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 just, we'll just try one of them, see how it works. And all right, so this is the RX 580, pretty bare, no back plate, so I'm not sure if the back plate would help or hurt in this case, but whatever, there's not one here. And then a uh, bare heat sink down below. Again, not sure if it's gonna help or hurt, but uh, I think it's gonna help, especially for the heat sink because there's not gonna be as much blocking that passive uh, heat you know, radiation. So uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Again, I expect we'll have a slightly We'll have slightly better luck with this. I really hope so. If we don't, then this project is a bust because I have no other car that's this low power that's still powerful enough to play games in 1080p. Uh, so, yeah, we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll try it out. Okay, so we're in Global Wattman now, and uh, you'll see very quickly why I think this is a good idea. I think Crackling Ice was onto something. You can lower the frequency by upwards of 50%. You can see uh, this would be pretty terrible if we left it like this. Um, what I'm going to do is keep it around 40% and I'm gonna lock the voltage to 800 millivolts max. I think that'll be enough. If it's not, then we'll go back and change it. Might actually be too much now that I'm looking at it.
tomorrow. Well, it didn't work, and I'm sure you can figure out why. The graphics card continued to reach 90, 91, 92, 93 degrees Celsius. In fact, with our AMD graphics card, because it couldn't throttle down anymore, the system just shut off whenever it got too hot in an effort to save the graphics card, which is actually a good thing. So I didn't want to let you guys just kind of, I don't know, hang there without actually seeing a fanless build work. But this system here is still fanless. It's just not as powerful as I would have liked for it to have been. So this is a GT, I think it's 730, 1030. I think it's a 730, GT 730. Anyway, it's, uh, it's a pretty garbage gaming graphics card. This is more for uh, people who don't have IGPs and who still just want to do like regular office work and stuff. This graphics card's fine for that, but I wouldn't recommend gaming on this thing here. We've shown you why in previous videos. There are several ways I could have done this. I could have again shoved like a really expensive high-end RTX 2080 or 2080 Ti into here and downclock the crap out of that because those already run pretty cool out of the box. And uh, maybe that would have worked without fans. I have no idea, but what I went into this thinking was that kind of the, the better performance per watt cards would be the ones to use here, uh, and uh, those still did not. I mean, we were running at 300 megahertz on the RX 580, and it still throttled, it still shut down the entire system because it reached over 90 degrees Celsius. Having at least one fan is, a, a, it's, a, it's a game changer, it really is. I would plug in one fan up top here and just kind of hold it over both, and temperatures dropped dramatically. Just one fan, getting some heat to be removed, because that's all fans do, they displace air. They move heat away from the source. That's the point. That's why we have these big heat sinks here, right? To absorb all that heat and then to radiate that heat or uh, convect that heat. Uh, and so having a fan there does a, a huge chunk of that job, and if you don't have a fan to remove the heat, then it just builds up. And once the heat sink becomes heat soaked, then the remainder of the heat funnels back into the CPU or the GPU, at which point it just continues to get hotter and hotter and hotter. And that's what we saw in this video through the multiple runs. So yeah, I feel kind of bad that this is the system you guys are stuck with, but it's the best I could do. It's a fanless graphics card. I mean, it's a low power card. It's, it's That's how it's supposed to run. And the CPU is massively underclocked, but it was still getting the job done. And when you have six cores at your disposal, it's okay if you drop some of those frequencies. It's gonna hurt you in game, but you're gonna be able to still run your day-to-day -day programs and not see too big of a hit. Um, so is it worth it? Absolutely not. In my opinion, stuffing just one fan in here, turning the RPM down so low that you can barely detect it anyway with that left panel on is, is way better than choosing to go for a downright passive system, right? Where, where no fans are included. And some of you were asking about why I wasn't using like the Accelero fanless whatever graphics card heat sink. And there's like CPU coolers out there that are designed to be fanless. I will say though, you should think about this. They still expect you to use fans in your case. They still, they still expect you to have case fans. So just because the, the cooler itself is designed to be fanless, it does not mean that, that the manufacturers expect you to use no fans at all in your system. So it would defeat the purpose ultimately to buy a fanless CPU cooler, but then to still have fans in your case, in my opinion. And that's why I've never really advocated fanless designs. It's just to me, it just doesn't make any sense because you're gonna need a fan somewhere anyway. If I could pull it off with this hardware, I knew I could pull it off with the more expensive stuff that's designed to run fanless and that was the point. So for those of you who are gonna be commenting, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you use this part? I'm gonna timestamp this section of the video. I'm sure there'll be plenty of you doing that because mo most of you don't watch the end of the video. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching you guys, especially if you did watch to the end of the video. I appreciate that. We had a lot of fun with this one, but it ultimately didn't end up working and that's okay. That's part of the experiment. Uh, you kind of have to take the risk and assume the worst. And uh, in this case, we didn't get what we wanted, but that's all right. We know why. We know that the graphics card in particular was holding us back. We tried AMD and Nvidia graphics cards and we still had a similar result. So. That kind of sucks. That car is very loud. If you guys like the video, thumbs up. You know what to do. Click that red subscribe button if you haven't already become a member. If you want to be fancy, get special dedicated live streams, things of that sort. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one. This is Science Studio. Again, thanks for watching and thanks for learning with us.